by a moral statement or by a letter of ours. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. The word of the Lord. but we're not concerned about what truly matters justice and mercy forgiveness all through the ages we have people who want to correct others but fail to look at themselves and undergo the conversion that God expects of each one of us Certainly that was not the case of King Louis IX. King Louis IX was deeply involved in a process of conversion. 
Regularly he prayed the prayers of priests and sisters, the office. He went to daily mass. He did penances, much more than any other kind of king. And as I said earlier on, he was concerned for the poor, the outcasts, the widows, the orphans. He truly exhibited the virtues of a Christian life. We have had throughout history those who were intent on making other people do the right thing, but not necessarily looking at their own heart. So right now, what is happening with us in our country? I pray for the situation with King Louis IX because there in St. Louis, there are groups of people who want to tear down his image. There's a very famous statue of King Louis IX in Forest Park, right in front of the Art Museum. And the people, there are people who are in favor of Black Lives Matter. They want to trash the statue, just as they did and they want to do with the statue of St. Junipero Serran in California. They're critical of King Louis because he fought against the Muslims, who, if we know anything about history, consistently were trying to invade Europe and bring everyone into the Muslim faith. What bothers me about these people who seem so self-righteous and who want everybody else to do what they think is the right thing to do is the fact that they themselves have to look in their own hearts and in their own lives and convert themselves so that they can practice the justice and mercy and the forgiveness that all Christians and all religious faiths promote. Let's not be quick to judge others harshly, to condemn others without understanding the shoes that they walk in. Let's look first to ourselves, as Jesus says, and undergo the conversion that each of us knows we must undergo. May God help us in this time of ours to be good holy men and women and to first change ourselves before we try to change everyone else. Let us pray. With faith and trust, we bring our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters to the Lord. For all members of the church, may Christ keep us faithful to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. For all people of the world, may the Lord's love and mercy be upon them and bring them to salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who live each day with fears and anxieties, may the Holy Spirit be their comfort and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For this community of faith, may God continue to fill us with his gifts and graces. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, particularly those with COVID-19, that God will relieve their pain, restore them to wholeness, and guide all who are caring for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, we remember especially today Christy Belensky, for whom this Mass is being offered. May the Lord welcome them into his eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for always hearing our prayers. 
Please answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, that we come to share the divinity of Christ to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Humble spirit and contrary heart may be accepted by you, Lord, to be a sacrifice. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of Blessed Louis, King of France, bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and you offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Mark, St. Louis the Ninth, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, <coughs> and all these things will be given you besides. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, 
in commemoration of blessed King Louis the IX, patron of the secular Franciscans, sanctify our minds and hearts so that we may merit to be made sharers in the divine nature through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother. See with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us, bringing healing to those infected, protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and care for the entire world in the wake of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. 